Good morning and welcome to this Informatica webinar entitled Data Governance Meet Data Security. My name is Andy Joss, I'm Head of Solutions and Data Governance for Informatica here in EMEA and this morning I'm joined by my esteemed colleague Steve Hollier who is a domain expert in data governance and data security. One of the things I think that Steve and I have seen quite consistently across our travels around Europe, Middle East Africa and Latin America is very often that we're having conversations with many organizations either with the data governance teams talking about data governance or the data security teams talking about data security. And actually what seems slightly odd to us is actually we very rarely have conversations with those teams together talking about how data security and data governance really do work together and complement each other in terms of how an organization can manage and control its data. So today's webinar is really just to give you some ideas, some hints and some insights and some of our experience about how this could happen and also about how some of the things that we're seeing are starting to play out across the different territories and the different organizations that we deal with. But I think to start with, I think we just need to do a little bit of a scene setting. And in the world of what we call data 3.0, and that's really this idea that in the world that we now live in, organizations are now building their organization around data. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's really putting data at the heart of the business and it's driving innovation, it's driving digital transformation, it's driving the core business activities organizations are trying to adopt and achieve, really to keep themselves relevant and make themselves advantageous to their customers in the marketplace. And as you can see from the slide, you know, we have a lot of challenges around data, everything from you know, huge amounts of new data that we have to live with. We've obviously got new users and, and many in the European uh, Union, for example, will be now dealing because of GDPR, you know, new stakeholders in the world of data, which will be you know, data privacy officers, chief privacy officers. Very often these people have legal backgrounds, not data backgrounds. Of course, we've got new types of data and the Internet of Things and social media is driving a lot of that, but we've also got new types of devices and a lot more devices. And then on top of that, we've got these great new technologies around artificial intelligence and machine learning that are really changing the way organizations utilize data to drive it for their business advantage. So there's a lot going on, and that's probably the key thing here. And whilst all this is happening, of course, some of the key things that we do need to bear in mind is that actually, when we're thinking about data itself, you know, even though we do have these things happening, in terms of the governance of that data, well, actually, there's some, some key global trends that are driving governance too. This notion, the idea of data being a strategic asset, organizations are really grasping that idea, and, and partly, I guess, because of what we were just talking about. We've also got those new data consumers we talked about, others too. There's a lot more people who are now engaged in the world of data who are not data professionals, but need data to be able to do their job. You know, we talked a bit about the growth and the types of data, and of course, something that here in the EU, uh, but also across other parts of the world as well, we're seeing an increase in data-centric regulation, not just GDPR, but also other forms of regulation as well. So data governance is playing a really materially important role in how organizations are managing their data and driving their businesses forward. And then when you think about how we're now looking at data privacy and protection and the security of our data, then this idea of the data being a strategic asset, well, that still holds true in a, in a security world, but we need to make sure that it is a secured asset and that we protect the asset as assets should be protected. Thinking about the utilization and proliferation of data, how data moves around an organization, well, that's really important too. We need to know what data we've got and we need to know where it's going to and how it's being used. We also need to think about what's happening in the world of breach. Uh, increasingly, we probably see many different um, uh, declarations hitting the social media and the press about organizations who've had uh, different types of data breach. And clearly, that affects confidence in organizations, who, who, uh, the customers for those organizations. But also, in terms of the sophistication and the style of, of breach, uh, and also allied to the amount of data, that, that challenge still hasn't gone away and potentially could get worse. And then this idea of data-centric regulation. We're going to touch a little bit on GDPR later. It's not the only one. There are other forms of privacy regulation and other forms of regulation. So actually, the point, point about all of this is all those trends in the world of data governance, we have all these trends going on in the world of data security. And actually, there's a massive overlap between the two. These really are complementary disciplines, complementary technologies. And Steve, a little bit later, is going to take you through how some of this fits together and how organizations can start to use and like these two sets of capabilities to really not just secure their data, but also then manage it to, to the best advantage. 
So I just wanted to start by just talking a little bit about what is data governance, and this is a question that I get asked a lot. And I guess if you had a room full of 10 people in a data governance space, you'd probably get 10 different answers. There's probably no one agreed answer across the business. Uh, today, we've just picked uh, an example from, from Wikipedia. And I think the important point about all of this is, is even at this level, I think it's well recognized that a lot of the traditional tenets of data governance in terms of management of data, availability, usability, for example, security always had and always should have been a materially important part of what happens in the world of data governance. It's just another aspect of governance, I would argue, but then I'm a data governance person, so I probably would. So data governance has always been about security, but actually we've just never really looked at it that way when we've come to implement our governance policies and our governance processes. So we've always felt that governance was really important and that organizations really aren't necessarily getting the best out of all of this if they're just focusing on governance in that traditional way. And actually what I wanted to do now, so I'm going to hand over to Steve, because I think the other thing that we need to look at is this idea about what is data security. And then Steve's going to pick up that story and just take us through, well, how does that relate then to data governance? Steve, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Uh, and Andy's absolutely right. When we're talking to um, people in the different rooms as we go around, and I've had the pleasure of presenting to CDOs, CISOs, um, CIOs, CXOs, you name it, they're all using the same same idea of what they want to do and how they want to protect data as a strategic asset, um, but they're just using different terms to be able to do it. And fundamentally, what Andy and I are trying to highlight here as we have our own discussions on a day-to-day -day basis is that, importantly, the two need to come together and the two need to be talking the same kind of language because, at the end of the day, they want to do the same thing. So let's look at what we mean by data security. And if you look again at Wikipedia of what it's trying to do, it's about protecting those data assets from destructive forces. I would argue it's actually about protecting strategic assets, whether that actually be something that is pertinent to an individual, whether that be a competitive advantage that you might have, IP within the company, that's a strategic asset. And what we're trying to um, make sure it happens is that it isn't misused in some way. Steve, so I guess one thing that I've, I've heard a lot particularly from people in the governance communities, for them data security might be perimeter level security, firewalls, it might be um, antivirus. It, it's clearly a lot more than that, right? Yeah, it, it's further down. It's much deeper than that. And what we're seeing is that there's a new perimeter starting to appear. It's great that you create these perimeters around actual databases or data stores of where they might be, but actually protecting and understanding what data you have is really quite important. And the reason I say that is actually you can put as much perimeter around a store of data or a bucket of data, be that a lake or anything like that, but as soon as it removes out of that with the proliferation and the utilization, let's face it, marketing people want to use this for sales trend analysis. I apologize to any uh, marketing people on the call, but that's what you'd like to do. You'd like to be able to take information and manipulate it. And often in the bucket, it's not quite in the manner that you want it to. So you'll move it into some other store or run reports around it. And at that point, you've taken it out of that perimeter security. So what we really have to have a concept of is actually understanding the information that we've got contained within there and create a data perimeter and start protecting the data rather than actually just looking at it at perimeter level. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. So let's look at some of the other parts. So we've got the definition there. So we want to look at, okay, why is data governance and data security so important when it's actually coming together? And what we're finding is, well, actually, the European regulation recognized that as well. So when GDPR came along, um, the General Data Protection Regulation, what was it about? Fundamentally, it's about securing individual assets and making sure that we as companies are looking after them. And it's been so widely adopted that actually we're finding that a number of other countries and areas, like for example the state of California in the US, Brazil, Chile, Lebanon, all of those states are looking at what we're doing around GDPR and recognizing that actually we're protecting assets and companies are wanting to protect assets. This, at the end of the day, whichever way you look at it, GDPR is about good data governance. And sorry to call the phrase, but that's what it is. People will look at it as security, actually know it's security and data governance coming together to protect assets for both the individual and for the companies as it goes through. So, so Steve, these, a lot of these regulations you've got on the slide, these are quite centric around 
personal data, like right. GDPR. But I guess this applies to kind of any kind of regulation and potentially any kind of asset, not just assets about people. Absolutely. So we, we work with a number of manufacturing companies, and what they've said is actually what we want to protect is data, like software data, for example, mm. that can be perceived as a competitive advantage. Yeah. If that gets into the marketplace, that could advance one of their competitors to up to where they may be. And so we want to protect that data as well. So you're absolutely right. The regulation is around looking at it from a, an individual basis, but it does so much more than mm. that. And that's where the importance of data governance comes together. Because if you start understanding the data that you've got and governing it correctly, you know how to put the security in place. And it doesn't matter whether you're applying that security in place to individuals or to assets that are strategic to you. It's about that. One of these such, one of these such um, opportunities, or I like to think of them as opportunities, is the GDPR regulation that came through. And I talk to loads of individuals, and what they tend to think is this is a threat, right? This, this is stopping us doing our business. One would argue that actually, well, you should have been doing this a while ago. The DPA in the UK, and I'm sure there's many other acts around the world, were actually about protecting data. It's just that we didn't actually do anything about it. GDPR has come along and almost given a stick to make sure that people are feeling that. But actually, when we look at it, what are they trying to do? Well, actually, know what data they have. Good data governance, good data security to understand that. Where that data may reside, you can't put that data perimeter in place unless actually you have an understanding of where that data is account in your organization. And from a governance point of view, for, for data quality or anything like that, you've really got to understand what that data is. Secure that data. How do you know you're securing the right data? You might have hit it in one point, but actually you find that some marketer or somebody else has moved the data, proliferated it, or utilized it in some other area, and you weren't aware of it. You've got to be able to secure the data wherever it may be existing. And then managing and using that data efficiently. What we've seen quite a lot of programs is digital transformation programs. Digital transformation programs, if they don't take the data from the right sources or protect that data, then what they find is they have mistakes further down the line, and that can make the program quite long. So, so Steve, you actually you raised an interesting point there. You, you used the word proliferation. And I guess just for clarity for, for people listening to this, I mean, my simple view of that is just an understanding of how data moves around and potentially outside of an organization. Is, is it literally that simple? It really is that simple. It's really about understanding how the data is moving around an organization and mapping that out. And that's some of the challenge, and that's where we go into the governance aspect of it, because we want to come together, right? We want to move that data throughout the organization because you want to use it. Why do we want to use it? Because it's a strategic asset, and we should do it. It will give us the insight into to our customers, into our competitors to really understand what we can do and give us that competitive advantage. But let's remember, if you don't protect it correctly, then actually it could give somebody else that competitive advantage too. Yeah, important. So actually what is it, what we like to highlight as well is that GDPR, and when if you get the good data governance, if you get the good data security contained within there, you'll actually identify new business opportunities. And we'll take you through an example of that one in a little bit. One of the things we also like to look at is actually if you can get all of this right, do the data governance, do the data security, then this has a long way of actually rebuilding the trust that many consumers have lost in the digital companies. And we're seeing more and more of that being highlighted. There are many companies unfortunately falling prey to this in the news recently. And consumers will, will do it with their, their legs. They will literally walk away from companies that are not protecting their data or being exposed in and, some and way. I, I guess a part of that is also if you're a company who are doing this well, and you're using that you know, effectively with your clients and potentially people are using their legs to walk to those organizations. Absolutely. Some of the companies that I've seen working with, um, arguably whether this is right for them to do or not, have actually put this in their statement of accounts. They've actually oh, wow. had a statement in there that says that they are looking after and protecting individuals' data. <laughs> whether that's a rag to a hacker, a rag ball to a hacker, no, no, really. no. But anyway, I think it's a great thing that we're starting to look at that. And if we look at some of the reports that are coming down the line as well, they're highlighting that actually organizations are looking at this as a business opportunity. And that's the thing, we've got to get this to a board level and make sure that the improvements around security, around governance and coming together is actually going to generate those opportunities and, and see it as a, as a competitive advantage as you go forward. Okay, now let's look at some of the data that we want to govern and protect. And, and you'll see some of the terminology come through. This is the hardest thing. Whenever I'm sitting down with a DPO or a CDO or something along those lines, 
uh, is actually talking about the terminologies. And I, I only presented yesterday to a, to a DPO, and we were talking the same thing. I was coming from a security angle. They were coming from a data governance angle. We were talking the same thing. It was about looking after and protecting those strategic assets, but understanding what those strategic assets were. Things like data domains, understanding what those what we meant by a data domain, which intends to all intensive purposes is just a piece of information, and making sure that was happening. But we were talking the same thing, but different terms, and it was confusing each other, and it took a lot of time to come through. And I think that's the challenge at the moment. Mm. Even you and I, Andy, when we're having discussions, that's true. We we do this all the time. You do. So let, let's look at a couple of terms about data that we want to protect, and there are actually a lot of them in the marketplace. But I've highlighted two here. One is about sensitive information, and this is quite broad in what it's doing. So Andy's rightly pointed out it doesn't have to just be personal information or customer information. It can be IP information that is pertinent to the individual company as well. But it's about sensitive information that only certain individuals should be able to see, and that is actually what GDPR is fundamentally doing. GDPR, though, will concentrate a little bit more on, okay, what is the personal data I would argue they're almost the same, right? Personal data and information relates to an individual or identifying an individual. That is about data or sensitive information that should only be seen by certain individuals. So they're almost coming together, and yet GDPR is coming from a data governance angle. The sensitive information aspect is coming from a security angle. They're talking about the same, same information yep. that needs to be protected as we go along. Um, so why is it? that data security is important. I think actually GDPR started to highlight this. Um, and when we started going through this, we started to look at the what um, of who it was protected and protecting personal data. The who was impacted by this. Again, we're looking at personal data. The why, actually they put a stick in there. But let's be, f let's be um, serious about this. What we're finding is that the why around penalties is not the driving force that's coming into play here. Actually, the why in reputation seems to be the actual most important one. And we've even seen in some, I, I had a Facebook update fairly recently that was inviting me to do a compensation claim against a particular company that had not actually looked after my data in some manner. That is what we're going to find is going to happen. You could probably discuss some of the, the risks associated with, um, with actually data breaches with the auditors that are coming through. But you can't discuss with the individuals. The individuals are going to sue you, and they're going to want to sue you for as much money as possible. So the important thing is, is bringing those elements of data security and data governance together, really understanding what assets we've got, really protecting those assets is quite key. Other thing is to look at is from a new perspective. We can start looking at how we can use this as that advantage. And they're, they're highlighting here is just some of the ways that we can use this as a potential for value. Transform a way that your organization manages data. So many companies I've been in, and I've been in delivery organizations too, and, I, and delivered projects myself, will just create sources from a number of other sources and chuck the data in there. They don't really have any understanding of why that data was relevant. It's just that it came from this source system and therefore must be important for the next source system that you're going. And you're always getting proliferation and reuse of data and duplicating data throughout your organization. Governing about understanding what data you've got and how it's using makes, enables you to correctly use it for the transformation programs that you might be doing later down the line. And if you've got data that you don't need, Get it out of there, because all it's doing is actually presenting a risk to you. We also have that holistic approach. So GDPR has come in and actually telling you now that when you look at data, you always want to do privacy by design. It's helping you to protect that information and ensuring that as new regulations arise, and be sure, GDPR is one. There will be many more coming down the line. If you have a good understanding of your data, good governance around it, and good security around it, then whatever regulation comes down the line, you'll have the assets, the tools, and the capabilities to be able to support that. The next part is looking at actually the big, big picture outcomes when we, get, we go through the data. And what we're trying to do is make sure, hey, look, data is a strategic asset. You can use, it, you can use the term, it's the new gold, it's the new oil, whatever you want to do. It really is. It's going to give you the power to drive your business forward and give you that competitive, market, uh, competitive advantage in the marketplace. Good reputation for data privacy. These breaches are being highlighted. They're in the media, they're on Facebook, they're on the website all the time making sure that we've actually got um, the right, right data protection by design into our, into our um, uh, policy procedures and processes enable us to um, help us in the marketplace. 
And also, from a data governance point of view, importance around data quality and operational efficiency, making sure we've got the right information. And of course, we don't want those fines, right? Those fines around GDPR get it wrong and they're coming down. Some people, when I've gone in and spoken to, believe that this actually won't happen. There are companies I know that are shutting down their GDPR program. Some of you may be smiling in the background, thinking, uh, thinking the same, oh, I've heard that we're, we're not doing much around that. Trust me, it's going to come. There's going to be these fines. They are happening in the background at the moment, and you don't want to be on the end of it. So get control of that information now. Also, making sure that if you've got that good data governance, it means you an understanding of why you're using the data and have contact with your data and protecting it, customers will allow you to engage with them more and therefore they will give you more customer, you'll have a better customer experience and they will feel more loyal to you because you're giving them the right information. We all hate being marketed with the wrong information. Get it right up front and actually we'll feel more better working with that company. So I think what you're saying there, Steve, is that actually a lot of what you've been talking about so far about bringing these two worlds together, it's kind of just good data management sense. It's got to be therefore good business sense and good business practice, right? Yeah, and that, that, that's the argument I think we've always had with for general data protection regulation. When we go into companies, you know, you and I, Andy, have spoken about it. This is nothing different to what we've been talking mm. about for the, from a security point of view and protecting data. I've been talking about this for 10 years, way before ge the uh, general data protection regulation. And from a governance viewpoint too. Exactly. So this is only putting in ensuring that those practices come into play. And, and I think that's a great thing. I really do think that's a great thing going forward. Going back into collaboration and ensuring that governance and security are working together, let's look at a couple of areas that we can, we can um, highlight here. So we've got the IT organisation. They want to start using data around audit and compliance support. They want to have asset value pack. They want to ascertain their risk. Um, and actually, they want to do de data protection as well. And that's looking at a number of people. Look at that. We've got the CDO in there. We've got the CIO. We've got the um, Chief Technology Officer as well. Keep going around the circle around protecting sensitive data or understanding what's going on with our sensitive data. The security team, well, obviously, they want to be involved in this. They're the buck stop for actually protecting data. And look, the DPO is in there supporting that part of it. But they've got to understand the date, same data as what the IT organizations for compliance when they're doing security um, decisions. Where are we going to put that perimeter security or the data perimeter security? Because they are expensive solutions to buy. And if you don't deploy them in the right manner, or then you can find that actually, even though you've deployed it, you get an actual um, a hack come through from it. So let's make sure we're deploying them successfully throughout. Other areas to look at is privacy, privacy by design. Some of the regulations ask you to do um, a DPA, so a data privacy impact assessment. You've got to understand what your risk is. Unless you've got the information contained with what data you've got, how it's flowing throughout your organization, what it's being used for, mitigating some of that as well. How can you ascertain what risk that data is to your business and whether it's something that should be used um, as you go through? The last area in the circle is actually business. I say it's the last one, but it's probably one of the most important. Business want to be able to use the data to answer the regulations, reduce their risk, and actually really drive data as a strategic asset to get that competitive market in, the, in its competitive position in the marketplace. So it's all about bringing all of these elements together, um, and all of it is around data security and governance. Agree, so, uh, absolutely. So I guess the, the one thing, just kind of looking at that slide and. To me, the, the thing that's kind of struck me really quite powerfully is the fact that un unless I'm missing something, that kind of covers most people in most organisations, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does, and that, that's, the, that's the struggle. We're not, I, I can go to two different meetings and someone will say, well, this isn't a problem for my data governance arena, this is actually for my data security team. And they will have a separate room for the CISO compared to actually the CDO. And I, and I, but I'm talking the same thing. Yeah. I'm actually telling them the same thing. I might use a different term. I might present it in a slightly different way. But fundamentally, they're wanting to understand the same information. And that's where I find it a real frustration. But if, if you look at it like this, and if you present it like this, to make sure that actually the same terminology is being used, bring the competitive advantage, bring the opportunities that actually working together, they can bring to that individual company. Sounds good. So let's understand what we have. Let's start thinking about how can we bring this together. So the first thing is understanding what we've got. I like to call this actually the bottom-up approach. The bottom-up is taking, taking from the bottom of your actual assets 
and understanding physically what we've got across the organisation and start to map those out. Using, using things like machine learning and AI, of course, to understand what those assets are, where they are around the organisation, how they proliferate around the organisation, where they might move to, um, and understand where that data might come from. So that kind of lineage and proliferation we're starting to map out there. That's the bottom up. That really is probably what security teams want to know. But the business also want to understand, okay, once we've got the information about what physical assets we've got, then we need to start looking at, well, what do we know about what we have? Why is that data existing in there? Why have I got a credit card sitting over there? Why have I got customer information there, there, and there? Is, it, is that really necessary? Is that something I need to do? So what we start to look at is, okay, overlaying the top-down approach. So that's, been, been, that's starting to bring in, okay, the business processes of why we're using that data across our organization, highlighting with why the data is there in the organization. And if there's not a match, so if we find that we don't have a business process that has that data that says we can have that data in that particular store, then again, why is it there? It's only presenting a risk to your organization. So you've got to find out what physical data you've got, sensitive or um, sensitive or personal, and then make sure you've got a business process associated with that part of it. But, but Steve, I mean, that, that's, that, that approach makes a lot of sense. I guess that bottom-up approach, I mean, some of, some of the organizations listening to this, they'll be large, complex organizations. They'll have lots of different types of data scattered across lots of different computers and systems and locations and, and geographies and continents. I mean, this is a massive problem. So how on earth do you do bottom-up? So, and that's where we come into some, Informatica has some really great technology in the marketplace to support that. Right. And we use a lot of machine learning and artificial intelligence to make sure we're understanding as well. We've got the connectivity to be able to achieve that. We've been in this marketplace of understanding data for a long mm. time. We've really got an understanding of the, the what we call the data perimeter um, vision of data, of information, and, and really want companies and help enable companies to use data strategic asset. So the connectivity Connectivity and that is there. What the idea is, is what we want to do is create a technology or create a process that actually define it once and then you can deploy it anywhere to really understand what it is right. and then combine it together with using that machine learning and artificial intelligence. Okay, cool. What we want to do is also then start to bring this together. So if you talk to your organizations and come from a business level, because when I talk to the bottom up and the top down approach, what you tend to find is actually physical assets are more understood by IT. Actual business uh, top down approach tends to be understood by business. And those are the two bits that we actually wanted to start bringing together. The understanding is already there. You have organizational people that have an understanding of how data is uh, uh, moving and how data is being used across the organization. So enable them to actually visualize that for you. And here's an example of some of the technology that Informatica has got to be able to start putting that together. So putting in an understanding of what they've got, start mapping out, start mapping out um, what, is cap what we have and how it's interconnected. Start talking to the subject matter experts. Start talking to the application owners, the operational people. How are they using data and what purpose are they using that data? And start building that map so you get a vision of how that data is being moved around the organization, which then can map to the physical assets that are sitting underneath. you agree, Andy? I do indeed. I guess one question I've got, though, is that thinking about when you talk about these kind of top-down and the bottom-up approach and knowing what you've got, I mean, there's going to be lots of data sitting across the enterprise, kind of, from a traditional governance viewpoint, which is my world, would be things like business processes and projects and regulations. And security world, I guess, is going to be you know, physical assets and security and, and classification. I guess then the, the challenge for me then is, is kind of how do we map all of that together so that we've got one view of being able to see everything from top to bottom and bottom to top. And that's about putting technology across the top, right? So using a collaboration tool that enables you to be able to do it so that when you see something, so let, let's talk, for example, very simple example is an Oracle database. An IT organization will see it as an Oracle database. Right. A business organization might know it as their CRM HR system yep. or something along those lines. We've got to be able to bring that world together to make sure that the information that we're providing at that physical asset level makes sense to the business. And only by then we can we actually say this business process is we're following through, we understand what that data is being used for in that organization. It's visualization and reports and stuff. And that's what Informatica is very good at being able to do. It's Sounds good technology. Sounds good. 
of course, what we then want to do is make sure that what we've got is reusable, mm. right? Once you've got all this information, you then constantly need to make sure that data is updated and being reused across the organization so that when you're doing a digital transformation project, when you're trying to look at a new regulation that's coming down the line, the data is already there and you can actually be consumed or understand where you've got to go for those particular regulations or particular areas. So now let's look at the information about how we might protect our assets. And importantly, what we need to do is take that information, we've understood our physical assets, what we've got, we've understand why it's being used, and now what we want to do is apply those actual protection methodologies. So that's where the data security comes into play even more. Actually, we know this is a strategic asset, we know this isn't strategic asset, we don't have to worry about that area, but we do need to have to worry about that area. So start applying particular technologies to make sure that you're protecting it and communicating that out and knowing back Remember we went back to that risk analysis for understanding risk, so we can actually understand that data is now protected because we found it, we understand why it's being used, we can now ascertain who, who should and shouldn't have access to that information based on the actual business process being used, and we can implement protection routines. We're deploying the technologies in the right manner, in the right place. And that's where the data perimeter element comes into play. And then visualizing reports back to understand what has been protected or hasn't been protected. So let's start looking at two, the two areas. So we've got two areas, data governance and data security coming together. Of course, there is a dispersed technology. Andy highlighted this very early on. We have all sorts of technology going on at the moment, and we've got to apply the data security and data governance across all of them. They've got to come together and talk to each other as they're going across. And Informatica is unique in actually being able to pass information that is found around um, data governance and passing its data security tools. Not only its internal data security tools, but also third party ones and bi-directional communication as well. Whether that be in the traditional structured formats in the databases, whether that be in the new type of big data or data lakes, whether that be on cloud or whether that be on file or unstructured. And what we want to look at is what areas can we actually support it. And that's like things like real-time masking, so as the results are being displayed back to individuals, they only see the data that's relevant for them, so things like credit cards might be hidden as a simple example. If the necessary is, is required, then actually doing database encryption, so changing or uh, protecting the data at rest. And then, of course, permanent masking, actually changing the data so that we've got I mean, if we, in the world of GDPR, what we're finding is people are talking to us and saying, we don't want to remove some of these strategic assets out of the environment. What we want to do is understand where our strategic asset is, use it, but actually use it so it's in a secure manner. So we've put, applied some security. And I'll give you an example for that. Some companies I'm working with, they want to understand the area where their customers come from. Well, okay, we've got the postcode. The postcode actually might identify, so, uh, identify where that individual is. But if we remove the last three characters of that postcode and keep the first four, four, is that enough to tell them the rough area of where their customer base might come from? Probably. Does it identify the individual? Probably not. So there's methodologies that you can use of applying that permanent data where you can still use the data for MI purposes without exposing individuals. So, so I guess for me, what, what I find interesting about this slide <clears throat> is the idea that from a governance viewpoint, what I've now got is I've got the opportunity to understand you know, what's happening down at that lower level. And I can see how that then is reflected back to things like my policies and my business processes and how the systems use that. I guess that kind of bi-directional nature of understanding what's happening at that lower level, that would give me a lot of insight from a business viewpoint about what I can and can't do, particularly if I'm in a change project. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, as, as you go forward. And, and there's many other uses for the data. Once you've got it, yeah. my God, it really helps businesses drive forward. Okay, so let's start to bring it together in a particular example um, and learn about how we can take advantage of the information that we've now found. So remember, what we've done is we've applied an understanding from a data governance of how the data is being used. We've applied data security and understanding the physical assets, those, those sensitive information. Now what can we do? Well, an example of this might actually be um, things like using those strategic assets in the cloud or for analytical purposes in, in artificial intelligence, for machine learning, and to produce, having all that data contained within there and making sure you've got the right data contained within there to build that opportunity going forward. Also supporting those strategic assets for a regulatory compliance point of view as well. So that when the regulator comes along and says, okay, we need information about individuals or what you're doing, how your business process, you've got it there. It's there for you to be able to use and actually apply that to the actual auditor that comes through. 
So one of the things that just strikes me about this slide, Steve, is this, this idea of this new perimeter. And obviously, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the concept of perimeter security, kind of you know, focusing on security around the edge. But now you've, you've kind of introduced this, this idea of, of a data perimeter, which seems to me at a much lower, more granular level, but probably something that says, in reality, we probably need to be doing this or should have been doing this anyway. I mean, in terms of what that data perimeter is and should be, do we kind of have a view of or a definition of what that is? Well, I guess in some respects what we're trying to do here is the data perimeter is about focusing protection and resources on um, ultimately the target of attack on sensitive data, right? So we're actually going at quite a granular level yeah. when we go down to there. Because putting that circle around your entire system means you're monitoring the entire system. What we want to do is take it down to a much granular level. This is the personal information. This is the actual the strategic information that we've got and put specific protection around that right. and monitoring those parts of it. So for example, using a very basic one would be a credit card. Yep. Right? Credit cards into the marketplace are quite valuable these days. So actually what we want to do is just protect that particular column. And that might be applying a masking routine, it might be applying an, uh, um, an encryption routine, a tokenization routine, whatever you might have. But we've gone to a granular level. It's not just a perimeter point. No, we've actually picked a data point and protecting that data point. We wouldn't have known that unless we'd have done the governance in the first place. Right. And we wouldn't have known that if we'd actually done the strategic searching in the first place of what is important to us. So, so I think what you're saying there is that we, we still need perimeter security. We still think oh, yeah, that's absolutely. absolutely important. But actually, let's go and drop down to that more granular level. Let's identify the things that are sensitive or personal, and let's put the necessary controls and protection around those assets and then monitor those and not everything inside that correct it's, it, 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 it's all about it, it's all you're, they're combining together you have to have that perimeter security as well because obviously there's going to be other data that's important and contained within there but keeping your strategic assets safe or those, those those really granular ones is important which is why we look at the data much more granularly uh, another example of this is actually artificial intelligence and, and you're going to have to bear with me here. Some people might raise a few, uh, raise a few eyebrows at this one, but we're going to try and explain this in a very unique way. And what we're, we're trying to highlight here is actually, when you look at um, AI, individuals are of, often looking at the outputs. They're not always looking at the inputs. This is the old adage, if you put rubbish in, you're going to get rubbish out. So what we want to do is help organizations to be able to do that. How have we done that? Well. Andy, haven't we just looked at our strategic assets, yep. built out where our strategic assets are, started to build out what processes are using that, and so we start to understand what data we're going to use? Right. That, we look at that. So just using that particular one example, and people are using artificial intelligence, they're using a lot of analytical engines, they're using machine learning to create it. Put the right information in there. You've got it. We've done it in the first episode that we've gone through. So why is data important to machine learning? Actually, let's look at it. The outcomes, artificial intelligence. What we've got there is supervised and unsupervised learning. For those of you that don't know, um, unsupervised means actually it's learning itself. It starts to take some parameters and, and make some assumptions. Supervised is we're telling it the parameters to work within. But importantly, it's about what data inputs you put into there to allow it to do the training, the test, and the actual results coming through. And going back to what we've talked about already, the information that you put in there has also got to be protected. It's got to have some security. Far too often I've seen businesses say, oh, we need information from this store and this store and this store, and they'll take all that information in and they'll dump it into this big data lake, and then they'll run the artificial intelligence machine learning across it, and they'll expect the results to come out. And they don't even protect data that's contained within there, exposing their organization. So let's go from a little bit of this. Let's go, imagine that it's a bit like an orange. I know you've started to raise your eyebrows now in the, in the background. If we start to look at this particular example, we've got our outcomes coming through. If we Googled online, if you Google, show me an image of an actual orange, what would you start to get back? Well, you probably start to get results like this back, okay? Not all of these are oranges. You've got clementines in there, you've got orange juice, you've got an apple made out to look like an orange. You've got um, half an orange. What is it as we're actually looking for? My original question of sampling or pictures of oranges seems to have displayed a lot of things. What you've noticed there as well, because actually the question came through and I've used it from my data, I've put a couple of padlocks in there. We started to apply the security because we knew that they are really important strategic assets and the individual that was questioning it didn't have the right to see that information and that's important too. 
And what we find then is, is actually, we need to make sure that we're giving it the right information. So we search for particular oranges, and we want to make sure the right results are coming through. So looking at that, that was the result that we were expecting, but maybe some of the results that we came through were incorrect. So it's all about understanding what information we're giving, governing it, protecting the information we're giving, security parts of it, and then making sure we're getting the right outcomes. And all of that coming together will really help but drive your business going forward. Anything to add to that, Andy? I think for me, actually, what, what struck me about all of that and this, this idea of data being like an orange, then surely the analogy of it like an orange, this just applies to any data, I would guess, if we're going to use it for AI and for machine learning purposes. Absolutely. I mean, we've used a very, very silly example there, but in actual fact, you're totally right. This picture does not just apply to oranges. It's all about data. It's all about making sure you're using the right data to get your right outcomes, because if you don't, then what you're going to find is you're going to get difficult outcomes coming through, and it may even take your business in the wrong direction. So I think for me, what's kind of interesting about all of this, and, and my background's very much in the data governance space, is thinking about kind of what these different dimensions of data we probably need to consider. And some of these are very traditional from a, from a data governance viewpoint. But actually understanding these five basic dimensions, so relevance I think would be one in terms of understanding, do we know what the data represents and is it the right data? That's traditionally been seen as a data governance practice, but actually in the world of data security, security lends an awful lot of insight potentially, particularly from your bottom-up story, Steve, about understanding what the data actually is. Uh, thinking about trust, about where it comes from, I think the world of security, I think, can provide a lot of insight into physically where data is coming from, and we can obviously make some, some meaningful decisions about what that means to us in terms of how it's going to be used or how it's been modified or changed. Um, timeliness, again, a very traditional data governance uh, facet, but actually understanding sources of data, how up-to-date the data is, I think data security brings a lot to that particular aspect, so it's not just around a data governance story. Of course, data quality, that's probably very traditional in terms of the world of data governance, of assessing profile and remediating data. And then lastly, but certainly not least, is that nature of the security of the data. As mm. in, what is it? Is it sensitive or is it personal? You know, is it adequately protected? Should it be adequately protected? To me, it just adds a really important fifth dimension to all of this. So from a governance viewpoint, you, I think you're absolutely right. I think the idea of the governance and security, we're talking the same things. They very clearly support each other across all of these five different dimensions. And it really brings, I think, a lot of synergy between the two. It certainly makes the ability to drive data from an AI viewpoint, which we've just looked at, I think, probably a lot simpler and a lot more trustworthy in terms of the outputs. And that's really, I guess, the most important thing that we want to consider. Yeah, it's, it's about them working together, isn't it, rather than actually working against each other. I've, I've seen so many companies where they've looked at security as um, a disabler more than <laughs> a <laughs> disabler. Okay, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But actually, for me, I think what's, what's been really enlightening about all of this, actually, I think everything you've just talked through, Steve, actually, I think this is really good news. And I think the reason for that is everything you've talked about, I think, is part of the Informatica Intelligent Data Governance story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the good thing being is that for lots of organizations who are on this journey, actually, for organizations that are already doing this, great, keep on doing it, you know, keep on doing more of it, because clearly there's a link and there's a synergy between the two. There's a lot of value from the two working together. But if organizations aren't, well, probably maybe we now recognize that maybe we should be, and if we haven't, then you know, we do need to get on and do that quite quickly. And actually, we probably knew all along that we should have been doing this. <laughs> so true. Actually, now, actually, hopefully, there's more of a compelling reason to understand, well, there's synergies between the two. There's a value from the two. Actually, putting the two together makes an awful lot of sense, whether you look at it from a governance or a security viewpoint. So hopefully, you found this interesting. Uh, we've tried to bring you some stories and some ideas around data governance and data security and really about the overlap and how all of these things fit and work together. So really, in the summary, I just wanted to give you a few key points to take away from today. I think the first one is really around, you know, we've seen regulation driving a lot of activity, both in the security and the governance space. I think understanding the regulatory landscape, the challenges that, that brings, and then using these as mechanisms and approaches to get your data under control, then clearly that helps from a regulatory viewpoint. But as Steve's already said, actually, that materially helps you, potentially, from an AI and from machine learning viewpoint. You know, some of the cutting, leading-edge projects that many of your organizations will be undertaking to try and drive additional value from your data, maybe make yourself more competitive in the marketplace. 
than thinking about an organized wide data security governance process. That's the idea of let's not think of these disciplines in different silos and the technologies in different places. Let's think of them holistically working together. And hopefully you've got from the session today that there's real value in doing that. And actually the Informatica platform gives you the ability to do that, which is fantastic. No other organization can do that for you. And then thinking about this slightly with a security lens on it, but actually this is a materially important point from a governance aspect too, is actually understanding what controls are required across your business really to mitigate risk and threat. Now that might seem very obvious from a security viewpoint, but actually from a governance viewpoint, if I have, for example, a policy in my governance world which is for GDPR, then actually that's about protecting data. Absolutely. So there's a material link between the policy from a traditional data governance world and physically what I'm doing with my data assets down in the infrastructure. There's a direct link between the two. And it's great that we've got the technology to be able to understand the link, those two worlds. And we talked a little bit about policy, but actually understanding how data flows. And in the world of data governance, we talk data lineage. Sometimes you know, that can be very complex and very detailed. But actually using technology to go and discover how data moves around the organization and potentially outside the organization too, giving me that big picture view of what's happening with the data and then relating that back to the policies and the processes, wow, that, that just gives you so much fantastic capability to go and use that data in a lot more creative ways, but know you're using it in the right way and for the right mm -hmm. purposes. I like your analogy, Steve, of data like an orange. Me too. I mean, I had raised eyebrows when you started with that one, but I get that now. It's just a visual representation of, of the problems we've had before. We still have them. Even when we talk in AI machine learning, we still have the same problems. But security materially really adds a great deal of value to solving those problems. And probably the biggest thing for me is the fact that intelligent data governance and security, well, it's already real. We already have it as part of the Informatica platform. So it's here to help, which is absolutely fantastic. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, we tried to give you, as I say, some insights into you know, what we're seeing and what we've been hearing from organizations about how these two different sets of capabilities really do complement and work together. And we've got a little bit of time uh, left now at the end. So what I just wanted to do is pick up a few questions. And to those of you who've sent some questions uh, in, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first question, a really simple one. Um, the slide pack will be available for download afterwards. Um, so you'll be able to get a copy of all these particular materials uh, once the, uh, the session's finished. So Steve, I've got a couple of questions I'm going to fire at you to start with, if that's okay. So uh, first one is, in your experience, what's the relationship like between the data governance mm -hmm. and the data security team? And what can be done to improve this? Bit of a loaded <laughs> question, I think. It is a really loaded question. And uh, it's, it's quite funny because the number of customers I've been into before, uh, kind of the security team are sitting on the edge and they're listening in and the data governance team always default to them about uh, using information. But other than that, they're wanting to uh, really drive forward. Um, and, and as I said to you before, I think the security team are seen as disablers. I think it's a, a horrible word to use, but that is probably the right word. Um, but fundamentally, it's about trying to make sure that they're talking the same information and sharing the same information, knowing that we're trying to do the same thing. You wouldn't expose your credit card. We wouldn't get credit cards out on the table and actually put them there and say and leave them there for anybody else in the organization to come through. So the security team are only trying to protect in that particular arena. By understanding what your strategic assets are that the security team are going to protect will also help you to understand what you need as moving forward. So bring them together, actually put them in the same room and try and actually um, move them forward because fundamentally we all want the same thing. Using strategic assets, actually protecting those strategic assets to drive a competitive advantage going forward. So, so I think in simple terms what you're saying is actually let's just take a view that the data governance teams, they're enablers. Yep but also the data security teams are enablers. Correct, but in a controlled we, manner. And bring them together in a controlled manner, and we yeah. can really take advantage of that. Great, good answer, thank you. Um, we've got another question here, which says, uh, governance and security teams view the same data, so I think this is in reference to the point you are making earlier, Steve, but in different ways. How does Informatica build a view of data that spans both worlds? So if this is with our govern uh, data governance technology, so we have a lot of data governance technology. We've been in the realm of trying to explain how business and technical teams look at data in a slightly different way. What we want to be able to do is try, sort of bring those definitions of terms together in, 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 a, in, a, in a data governance kind of engine. For us, that's Axon. Um, that would support that part of it, almost like a definition of terms. And, and, and I'll give you a really quick, simple example. I went onto a particular customer site and they asked me to, um, could we look for D number? And they looked at me as much to say, this is a, a, an industry standard. How do you not know what D number is? And me and the DBAs kind of looked at each other as going, hmm, never heard of D number in this industry before. 
um, technical team, we actually sorry, spoke to the business team and said, well, can you describe what that is? They weren't particularly great at describing what it is. Um, they said, well, it's just a column that we use, or a bit of information. As it turns out, what it actually was, was a, a combination of sort code and account number that had come together. <laughs> ah, and there's D number. Right, okay, must remember that that is an industry standard. But it's building out that understanding, right, when we're talking the same language. And the glossary of terms, or the information combined in a governance tool, will really help you to achieve that. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. Um, Another question here for you, Steve. So here it talks about, you, you mentioned a little bit about collaboration earlier, and the question is about collaboration you described sounds difficult to achieve. How do you make this happen effectively? Well, I think that's about sharing information. That really is. We, we, we sort of, we did those diagrams that show business processes and things like that, and the business people will put that aspect of it in. Um, from a security point of view, we think about it from a physical asset as, um, aspect. So it's a data store. It's a piece of data contained within there. That's what we want to protect. That's what we want to look after. But actually, the business will think about it holistically much bigger than that. They will think about it as a business process. Share and collaborate that information. And that's what some of the great data governance tool that Informatica's got contained within there will enable you to be able to do. We also want to look at the impact. If we mm. put a security policy in place in that particular store, that's great, right? We've protected that area. But if there's a downstream flow that moves it and we weren't aware of it, then all the protection we've put in there is great for that point, but when it flows out into the next system, because that's what the business process does, security of lost control. Mm. So actually what we need to do is collaborate in those particular arenas, and that's what game governance tools and, and security bring together. So, so I guess one aspect of that collaboration is actually also integration. So we've got yeah. this view of data from a from a, a, a landscape, from a technical, physical viewpoint, and we integrate that data actually to represent in more business relative terms. Absolutely. And, and once we have the ability to do that through the Informatica platform, then that collaboration just sounds like that would get a lot easier yeah. if we did that. That's what we're hoping for, isn't it? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good thing to do. Um, somebody mentioned, ah, yeah, you mentioned proliferation, Steve. Uh, knowing something is one thing, but doing something about it is very different. How do you translate knowledge into action here? So that's about understanding why the asset is there, mm -hmm. right? So we, we see, we, we pick up that particular systems contain, I'm going to use credit card because that's it's kind of a simple example. What we want to look at is, okay, there's a credit card here, there's a credit card here, and a credit card here. Did that come from one particular source? Was it a feed that came down? And why was that uh, source feeding down? So that's about bringing physical assets together with the business process that moves them down and, and then proliferating, understanding why that information proliferated from one. It might be that they were different inputs. That's absolutely fine. If that's a reason for it, that's great. But if it's a business process that did it and you have that proliferation for that, then you need to document that and bring it together because then the security team know where they can protect it across the organization. Cool. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we have another one here, actually a relatively simple one, so I don't think you need to, to answer this one, Steve. So the question we've got is about um, whether there's information and presentations available on the various Informatica solutions and the functionality used to capture, model, analyze, and present the strategic assets that Steve was relating to. Um, actually, if you go to the Informatica website, which is informatica.com, um, if you have a look in the solutions section, there's a section in there which is called data governance. Um, you'll find a huge amount of material, both in terms of presentations, videos, uh, PDF files, uh, solution spree sheets, and a whole raft of other uh, different assets really around data governance and security. So give you a lot more insight into what the products are and how some of these things physically work together to enable some of the things that Steve was talking about. So thank you very much for that question. Andy, can I switch it back to you? And just, uh -oh. just, uh -oh. just Yeah, exactly. I mean, you seem to be pointing all the questions at me, so I thought I'd, I'd throw some back at you. Okay. Um, when, when, com when I talk to companies, they get a bit nervous. Mm. They think, my goodness, data governance and bringing data security is big and complex. Um, how long or how, how would you see envisage this happening going forward? Because they're going to go, whoa, I've got to do all of this. Yeah. And actually, we probably want to narrow them down a bit. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's a fair point. And, and the way I start with many organizations, they look, you know, we need to be realistic, right? Data governance is a bit like a puppy. It's for life. But the point being is we have to start somewhere. And puppies start small and then they grow. Data governance is exactly the same. So maybe we've got another analogy we need to work on. We've got data like an orange and then data... <laughs> I was just puppy. thinking that. <laughs> yeah. But actually, the, the materially important thing being is actually finding somewhere in the business where you can start to test out some of these capabilities to prove that this works. And more importantly, show some value. 
So uh, organizations, for example, if you think about your bottom-up example, they may be deploying technology to go and get a good understanding of the data assets they have in their landscape. And actually, from a, from a usage viewpoint, they can surface that up to people like business analysts, for example, because now it really materially improves the productivity of those people, because now they don't have to go hunting for data and finding it. Actually, they have a tool that's done the work for them, and they can just go and say, well, actually, I, I need this piece from here and that piece from there. So actually, they're starting small and scaling, I think it's really important, but also you can kind of take the same idea from the top down as well. So actually understanding business impact of data, maybe go look at a particular part of the business or a particular set of processes or policies, maybe even you know, the regulation like a GDPR. Just start to map that out because all of the information that's at it, they generally speaking are already available but actually it's about combining and bringing these things together. So the really quick win for many organizations to come back to your analogy of doing the bottom up and the top down, pick an area of the business where you feel that there's some real advantage in terms of improvement being driven by data management, apply the bottom up through technology and the top down through you know, harvesting the assets, linking it together as we talked, that's not a big complex project by any stretch of the imagination, yeah, yeah. but it really proves the value. And then you can surface the results back up to business users, IT users, the governance community, the data community. They will see the value from that. And then you can really spin further projects off the back of that. Because, of course, it's informatic and technology, which means it's designed to scale. You can start small and then think big. Okay. So that's really a good way, I think, of getting organizations onto this journey. But it's so important to show value because otherwise, why are you doing it? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And one of the, one of the questions that has, has come up, and I think it's a great question actually, is about um, changes. How do we keep this updated? Um, and I, I guess from a security or the bottom-up approach, I can probably answer that, and maybe you can answer from the top-down aspect of it. So uh, some of the companies that I'm working with, some of the companies that I'm working with, what they've asked is, okay, well, I'm going to do this as a, a manual approach, right? I'm mm. going to take a manual approach to yep. this, um, and then we'll work out what we're going to do later on. <laughs> well, right. Manual approaches normally mean a spreadsheet, yep. don't they? That's how we're going to document our assets. Yep. That's normally what it means. Spreadsheets are great. I love spreadsheets. I work with spreadsheets all the time. But they're very difficult to maintain, and they're very hard to find information contained within them. And actually, if you're going through all of your assets, to do that over a seven-month program or an eight-month program could be quite a long time yep. to really find Absolutely. out what you've got. And you're very reliant on people telling you sometimes what's yep. contained within there. Then seven months down the line, are you going to go through that exercise again? Because I can tell you, GDPR and regulations don't actually sit still. No. Your data doesn't sit still. We've already said it's a strategic asset. If it's a strategic asset, you want to use it. So you've got to have a way of constantly maintaining Absolutely. that. And so we actually, as part of the program, start continually scan. We're continually updating that information to make sure that we're picking up those relevant strategic assets and highlighting where they are and updating the actual um, bottom-up approach aspect of it. Now we've got to align that to the top down. Absolutely. Right? That's where you will come in and... Yeah, absolutely. And I think your point about kind of that con the concept of the continual scan, so we're going to use technology to go out and kind of discover these physical assets that we've got across the enterprise, and then we can use that technology to continually update so we can keep on top of the changes. I mean, for many organizations, change is the only constant they have now. So keeping on top of that's really important. But actually, think of this more from a traditional governance viewpoint, particularly in that top down world, then actually we have lots of projects going on. We'll have different business units implementing new systems and retiring old ones and, and lots of different activities which happen at maybe a, even a program level at something quite higher. So actually putting in place the ability to kind of manage that from a change viewpoint so we can start to document projects but also document and understand the impact of change. Yeah. And I think this is so important because right. as we understand the connection between the bottom up and the top down, once we start to implement change, so we're, let's, for example, we're going to introduce a new system, we can start to recognize very, very quickly, well, what's going to downstream and upstream be impacted by this, which is clearly a big issue any time you introduce a new system. So actually thinking about this from a change viewpoint, I think is really important, but then embedding that notion of change into the, the programs themselves, but this is governance change, so it's just part of the program, I think it means that it makes it much easier to keep in step from a business viewpoint whilst using the technology to keep in step from a technology viewpoint. And the fact that Informatica has linked the two together, I think makes it much easier to manage the whole change cycle. I do too. So listen, we, we've just about run out of time. So uh, thank you very much to everybody for the questions you sent in. We've really enjoyed that. Hopefully today, You've you gleaned a lot of insight into what we've been seeing happening in the marketplace and what we're seeing organizations doing now when they're considering much more around how the world of governance and security fits together. For now, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. And both from Steve and myself, thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.